expected to seek out the best. Two words to describe the activity. The European Unity Forum is coming to you on Be the, the first to know. From the north, south, east, west, and around Africa. Presidential We break the news. Women in Nigeria. Now you can catch all the actions live I wish you would as the news breaks. We are Core TV News. Welcome to Core TV Prime Time. A 24 hour news station. impact of insecurity in northeastern Nigeria politics election uh, for COVID in 2015 as all of these impact on the economy as well just yesterday two suicide bombers have attacked a, uh, attacked a crowded market in Madiguri killing scores of people and eyewitnesses said that at least 30 people were killed in the twin explosion at the popular Monday market security forces have also confirmed that the, uh, the blast but they indicated as at yesterday that it may be too early to know the casualty figure now this is the first bombing incident in Madiguri in recent times as most of the insurgent activities had been on the fringes uh, on the front pages of the newspapers this morning, you have um, varying figures. The Vanguard puts it at 67 dead, uh, 98 injured, 30 shops and 25 vehicles destroyed. But then uh, uh, the Bono State government confirmed 54 bomb victims are presently on admission in the aftermath of Tuesday's suicide bombing in Madiguri. 14 people, they said, were critically injured in the incident, while 20 have been discharged from hospital. Executive Secretary, Hospital Management Board, Sally Subura, disclosed this while briefing Governor Kasim Shaitima during his visit to the victims at the hospital in Madiguri. The hospital authorities also noted that 24 bodies were brought to the hospital and all of that. I'm still uh, joined this morning by a public affairs analyst is also the MD of Financial uh, Dailies. Did I get that? Financial Financial Times. Standard. Financial Standard. Thank you very much, sir, for staying the course on the show this okay. morning. Thank you, Joe. We, we started with the dwindling figures between Naira and Dollar. But then, insecurity in the name of terrorism has also been around for a while. What impact do you think that has had on the economy? Very well, it has had a uh, it, it has taken a major chunk of this year's budget. If you look at insecurity in the northeast of this country, the insurgents, the Boko Haramists, the so-called terrorists, they have made the federal government to expend more money than necessary on defense budget. Mm. They have had to buy hardware, software, different matching, different ammunitions, just to be able to contain them. In the process, it has also elevated corruption. Because you realize that three service chiefs, on three occasions, the service chiefs have been changed. Why they were changed, we were not given any reasons. Some of the money that were meant for purchase of ammunition were being diverted. Some were over-invoiced, over-inflated, and all sorts. Ammunition that are meant for the soldier are not getting to the soldiers. As soon as one ammunition arrive at a particular barrack, you find the Boko Haram creating a bomb situation and cutting away this ammunition. So this has cost the Nigerian government a chunk of this year's budget in terms of trying to procure all sorts of equipment for the, mm. for the, for the defense of the nation. Mm. That is one. Two, once you take more than the fair share of the budget for defense, then it, which means it affects other areas. It affects other areas because other areas that you needed to have done one or two things, you are not able to do it, you are handicapped. Mm. And you cannot leave the nation just like that mm. and be saying that you want to protect hospitals, you mm. want to protect the, when you know that these soldiers are taking up towns and villages mm. and are telling you that they are they are creating an Islamic state here, they are creating an just Islamic state. Just yesterday, uh, for about eight hours, the senators have a, a, a closed-door session with service chiefs and the Senate resolved to 
publicly debate, uh, de deliberating rather on President Goodluck Jonathan's request for extension of emergency rule in Adamawa, Bonu and Yobe. One of the issues that came up of that meeting also, just like you have made mention in your opening remarks, talked about troops uh, getting equipment for the Nigerian military, getting enough funds to, you know, to be able to you know, manage the situation. But let's hear from the Senate spokesman, Eyinaya Abarabe, who talked about the closed door session with the service chiefs yesterday. The military has uh, shown itself to be capable of dealing with the insurgency. The fact that they are capable of dealing with the insurgency means that the Senate will do all in its power to support the Nigerian military so that we can bring this insurgency to uh, a quick uh, resolution. We also found from their briefing that we have some problems which has to do with the troop levels and with the level of equipment and of course all the other ancillary problems where you have to fight what we call an asymmetrical war, not a formal conflict. And we're very glad that the military is, at this moment, gearing up itself to be able to deal with this asymmetrical conflict in the northeast of Nigeria. The question of the state of emergency was not what was on the table today. And we are going to also wait until it's brought on the floor of the Senate and we will now discuss it. What the Senate did today was to separate the uh, two questions. Of course, the military continues to insist that they need the state of emergency to be able to conduct operations in a manner that will bring it to a quick resolution. When the Senate now takes the question of state of emergency, of course, you will be there because it will be discussed in open plenary. Senate spokesman there, Eyinaya Abarabe, talking about, he actually said that the Nigerian military has shown enough capacity to be able to surmount insurgency. Also talked about the possibility of the House sitting today as regards the proposed extension of emergency rule in Adamawa, Yobe and Bornu states. But that particular statement, do you think the military indeed has shown enough capacity to surmount insurgency? Nigeria? Well, if you're talking about today, I will agree. But in the past, they have not. And I think they are learning from their own weaknesses as well. Mm because uh, they have lost their pride among the Nigerian people. People who just believe that the military have not gone to war for several years. They have become war rusty. <laughs> so, but now, with time and the number of soldiers that have been killed day in day out by the Boko Haramist, they have now woken up to the reality of their situation, that their job is mainly to defend the integrity and the sovereignty of the nation. And I think they're waking up to the reality. For instance, one of the service chief's houses was burnt yeah. and his village raised to the ground by this Boko Arams. Yeah. So I want to believe that they are now showing more audacity. And then the mere fact that discipline has been lacking in the military for some time, but the command structure has been put back in place because of the fact that some of them have been tried for running away from the war front to absent without a war and all sorts. Yeah. So things are beginning to take shape. And then the mere fact that they are now rewarding people for performance, right. like the three three officers that were uh, 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 promoted yeah. because of their velo, it's now going to be an encouragement to others yeah. that, oh, I can still get my own reward yeah. in this nation. So I think that's another. They have, they have shown the capacity, and I think they should be given the right equipment to be able to offer the right solution. Well, would you agree with me that these indeed are trying times to become president of Nigeria? At one hand, we're discussing economy, at the other hand is insecurity, and it looks as if Nigeria hasn't had it this bad in all of its historical records. I don't understand the question. I'm talking about, would you agree that these indeed are hard times 
to lead Nigeria as a nation with the concussion of challenges that we seem to have now? Well, every nation faces their own challenge. But these are rare times, wouldn't you say? It's not a rare time. The 9-11 uh, incident in the United States was a great challenge to the government of that year. It didn't stop them from conducting election. There was a time about two, three years ago, the entire economy of Europe and America were down. Mm. Changing government were coming and government were remaining in power. It didn't stop anything. Putin remained in power. In UK, Cameron came in. In US, Obama, Obama license as the president was renewed, despite the fact that the economy was going through a worse time. Mm. So I don't see anything that is wrong in it. It is the people's interest that matter. It's not the interest of whoever leads. It's the interest of the people that must take priority over every other thing. If the nation wants this person to be Mr. President, good luck. Mm. If they want that person to be Mr. President, good luck. It depends on what all parties are putting on the table mm. and how it revolves around people mm. and what people want to achieve with it. That's it. It's all right. Uh, let's quickly look at this issue of extending the emergency rule. The House of Reps already threw it out the window but hopefully the Senate will sit on that issue today. But I want you to analyze it, looking at it from the economic point of view, even as we also count ahead to the 2015 general elections in the States. You see, whether we like it or not, the emergency rule will be extended. Part of what the military chiefs will be telling them yesterday, even though we're not privy to all the discussion because it was done in the House, they might be telling them that, look, if you don't extend the state of emergency, it then means that you will give the Boko Haram the opportunity to use human shield to continue their devastation. If they know that people will be able to move around all night, they, they will move around mm. all night and be mingling among people yeah. and be using it to wreak havoc on the people. And if the military is going to conduct anything, it means they will just kill people. Civilian casualties will be too much to contain. It's just like the Boko Haram themselves, they come to a crowded market, they take opportunity of the people, and they just move in and destroy everything. They go into public school, they destroy the school and kill the children. They go into Chibok, carry, cut away all the students and also. So you need a persistent privilege to be on the ground that, look, emergency room must be extended. If it is not extended, and the military will have to conduct their operations, the human casualty will be too much. But how do you justify this position with the claims coming from representatives from northern Nigeria, who are of the opinion that emergency rule had not worked thus far, and it's over one year stay in this three? It's they, almost 18 months. They are saying that people from their constituency do not want it. It has a, quite a number of economic uh, impact on them, and that it does not even solve the particular challenge of terrorism in the states. Whichever way man chooses, men are bound to die. Whether the emergency rule is terminated or extended, mm. the Boko Haram will still continue to operate until the last of them is removed. So the issue of the fact that they should not extend it, the constituency is distinct. The only reason why those people are complaining is that it has hampered their economy. They are not able to sell. They are not able to produce. They are not able to go to the market. Mm. They are not having money to make their purchases. They have no economic power anymore. That is why the people mm. in the constituency might be speaking against emergency rule mm. extension. But for the for the uh, reps that are throwing it away, I am not sure they are looking at the other side of the coin. The other side of the coin is that if your brother and your sister go to the market and they are bombed at night, who do you have to blame? Are you going to blame the military? As the military are conducted, for them to say that the emergency rule has not achieved anything is just an understatement. I'm sorry, I'm not from that area. But I know what will have happened if people have been allowed to go through their normal activities without any furore yeah. of emergency rule. Yeah. More people will have died. More people would have been kidnapped. And whether you say you want to do any economy, you can only do good economy under an atmosphere of good security. 
It's all right. Let's just um, open the phone lines also to uh, feel the pulse of the people as regards the proposed extension of emergency rule. We'll appreciate calls from states presently. Uh, well, I believe that a few days ago the emergency rule elapsed and uh, these states are waiting on the National Assembly to know which way forward. But well, we appreciate calls from Adamawa, from Bonu and Yobe to really know what it feels like not to be able to move out uh, within a particular period of time under the guise of emergency rule. But you talked about the possibility of civilians being casualties. I thought we have the bomb attacks even under the circumstance. Yeah, you've had series of bomb attacks, series of uh, mortality rate, high mortality rate and all sorts. But it will have been worse if there has been no emergency rule. You see, it is easier for the military to conduct their operation under emergency rule rather than under a free system. Yeah. Whereby when they are going, you won't even know the difference between the Boko Haramist and the civilian population. That's the danger. But you see... Get it, be that as it may, the emergency room may not have been necessary if there had been serious cooperation among the people. Every society knows the criminals in their society. In Adamawa, in Borno, and in Yobi, the people, the civilian JTL used to detect who the Boko Haram is. They would stop vehicle and they would drag them down and burn them or hand, over, hand them over to the police or the security forces. Then, it was like the Boko Haram were about to be exterminated. But suddenly, the military came up with another policy, saying that every civilian JTF must come and register in Abuja with the defense, uh, defense uh, house, defense headquarters. You see, this is a blow to that operation, because how many people, the civilian JTF, will want to travel to Abuja to go and register a vigilante is just like saying that somebody should leave a pair to come and register in Lagos, that you have a vigilante group, yeah. which is meant to protect your immediate community. Civilian JTF were meant to protect the immediate environment from this Boko Haramist. Yeah. And it seems to be working there. Why the military authority decide to stop it is what I don't know. Because inf relevant information can only be uh, gotten from the people around that place. But uh, are we not in between the devil and the deep blue sea, given the uh, uh, worst, very bad economic impact that emergency rule will have on the state at this very crucial economic time in Nigeria? And then the other side, uh, because you are obviously a proponent of an extension of this rule. I'm not a proponent, but I'm in support. Mm. I'm in support of an extension for the sake of civilian casualty. If you say that the economy is going to be bad, it will be worse without emergency rule. How do you mean? Good. If you want to sell bread, you don't even know whether the bread you want to sell has been planted with a bomb. By the time it explodes, it becomes a problem. What profit do you make? For instance, the market that was uh, bombed yesterday, people are there selling their wares, selling items. What gain do they go home with? Uh. When all the money made, everything ends up in hospital. Let's take this call from Lagos. Good morning, Larry. Larry, welcome to Call Digest. The emergency room and the insecurity in the northeast. Uh, from history, we learned that uh, in 1983, we have this like insurgency, which they call Matasini. Those people, they are just like this Boko Haram, attacking Nigerians and claiming terrorists. Then, the president was uh, Alagi Shehu Shagari, and the GOC that was in charge of uh, battling them was uh, General, Major General uh, Muhammad Buhari. When they started the battle, he fought them. He fought them with all his efforts. At the time, we learned that even the president asked to ask uh, Wari not to continue the battle with uh, with this insurgents. But they said Wari said he's a general. I asked one rule. 
The role is that to defend Nigeria territory and make sure that there's no insecurity in the land. He fought them, he ensured that he delivered Nigeria from these Matasinian warriors. And he fought them, he, he ensured that he captured them. When they said that he should not force the presidential order, he said that he's ready to resign. But he has one role. His role is to ensure that Nigeria is safe. And this man successfully delivered Nigeria using his uh, troop there. And when he came back, he came with lawyers, and people commended him for his effort. And, oh, I don't wonder, don't we have committed generals now, like uh, in the past? And I believe that if we want this issue to come to a reasonable end, the president needs to take a decisive action, taking positive action against this local armed element. So I will then say sitting with the Shinsu Sire when the military are having the upper hand. And this is a guess that affected the economy badly. To the extent that as your analysts has explained that it is the money that they ought to have been used to the construction of roads, building of factories, ensure that our power supply is better and they, they are committing everything to fight insurgency. And it increases the, the corruption in the, the, the Ministry of Defense. And, you know, uh, it is easy for the Ministry of Defense to have one book cross contract without query. Security matter that nobody queries their, their budget. And, and of recent, we learned that the Indonesia happens to be one of the richest general in Nigeria, in Nigeria today. So, we, we Nigeria should be ready to challenge our leaders to account so for right. this money that they are using to fight in war. Because right. they, they, I believe. Uh, only God can help us. And then we are ready to deliver our set. Thank you. It's all right, Larry. Thank you very much for your contribution. Mm -hmm. Calling from Lagos. We appreciate if we can get calls from Adamawa, uh, Bernu, or uh, Yobe. Uh, from where, indigenous of those areas. Or, or from indigenous of those areas. So we can uh, find out what that particular emergency rule feels like. But no, then. Wait, wait. Uh, Mr. Larry, just to reconstruct the history he was trying to yeah. lay on the ground. It was true that during. President Chagari's time, there was, there was the Matasine issue. Okay. But you remember that in the same 1983, Buhari hijacked the democratic government okay. in December 31st. Mm. Now, the Matasine did not even go in 1984. During Buhari's regime, he was not able to tackle it. Mm. As GOC was tackling it under Cheo Chagari, when they finally took over with the Diabon, he was not able to tackle it. It was the government of Babangi that eventually wiped them off. And what are the tactics they use? There was no democracy there. It's a one straight command structure. Go there and brutalize everybody. So they don't care who died or who didn't die. Under a democratic government, there's very little you can do. Not that the president has tackled it, that this government has tackled it properly. Because if I were to be the president today, what I would have suggested they do is to seal all the borders. When you seal the border of all these countries around us who rely on Nigeria for the safety of their own economy as well, they will do something about this insurgency. Let's just take a commercial break now. When we come back, we'll take more calls. We're expecting indigents of these affected northeastern states or residents in Adama, Yobi, Auburn. Stick around. Don't go away. In February 2015, Nigerians will vote for their next president. So we asked one simple question. What do Nigerians need? A vibrant economy. Make business better. A safer environment for my family. Better school for my children. Strong leadership. This is a beautiful country. We're enterprising, optimistic, and we're also resilient. There are many issues that affect us all, but I believe together we can resolve them and overcome them. Schools are often inaccessible, ill-equipped, or simply not conducive learning environments. Without education, our children cannot achieve their potential. No nation 
can rise above the level of educated people. Education is not a luxury, but it's a must for everybody, for every human being. My classroom is the Nigeria of tomorrow. Poverty is the enemy of progress. Nigeria must create opportunity for its people to thrive. I want to work to provide for my family. Nigeria has to empower the private sector to continue to play its role as the biggest and largest job creator. Small scale, medium scale, large scale entrepreneurs must be encouraged. Safety and security are concerns for all Nigerians. I want my child to grow up in a safe Nigeria. The primary responsibility of any government and is enshrined in our constitution is to protect the lives and property of individuals. It is only with security that the inhabitants of this country will be able to unleash all their potentials in terms of development, in terms of enterprise. So it is essential that government pays attention. What do Nigerians need? A leader that understands the importance of education. Atiku Abubakar is the founder of a chain of schools that provide quality education of a standard comparable to any country in the world. Someone that understands the economy. Someone to create an enabling environment for jobs. Atiku Abubakar understands business. In fact, he's one of the largest private employers in Adamawa and River States. A leader that can unite the nation, north, south, east and west. Atiku Abubakar transcends tribalism and religious sentiment. A leader with experience. Atiku Abubakar spent 20 years in the public service, served for eight years as Vice President of Nigeria, and was Chairman of the National Economic Council. He's qualified to lead our nation to a brighter tomorrow. This is one of the greatest countries in Africa and in the world. This country is blessed. With the right kind of administration, this country can be transformed. So it is my desire to give back to this country all that is within my power to do. I am Atiku Abubakar. Together we can build a Nigeria for all. Has it been a difficult task for you to purchase exquisite, classic, durable and sturdy furniture that will last the test of time? Here is good news for you. Purchase high quality furniture for your household, offices, hotels and schools at Prince Interior Furnishing and Furniture Company Limited. Office address, Goshen Plaza, Showroom 28, Kubo Furniture Market, AYA, Nyanya Road, Abuja. Telephone 0803-119-1444 or 09-291-7482. Email princeemeka240 at yahoo.com. Info at princeinterior.com. Website www.princeinterior.com. Purchase your furniture at Prince Interior Furnishing and Furniture Company Limited. Classic strong, exquisite. Welcome back. It's Cold Digest West Day. The numbers are scrolling on the scroll bar right there on your screen. If you have goods and services you'd love to advertise to Nigerians on this show. Now we're wrapping up this segment in any moment from now, but we're expecting calls from residents or indigents of this uh, three states, Bornu, Adamawa and Yobe, uh, that are of course the subject of discussion as regards whether the emergency rule in this region be, in the states rather, be extended. Uh, Bola Lanuga, just before we go, what way forward as we begin to talk about insecurity, economy, even elections in 2015? How do we matter, marry all of this? There is together? no way election will hold in all the local governments in all the three states. Are you being pessimistic? 
No. It's not about being pessimistic. It's about the safety of the people. The security of the people is more important than the election. The security of the people is more important than the economy. That means you you don't see this thing ending. That is why February the house. That's why the House of Representatives are saying that they don't want the emergency rule to be extended because some of the reps that are coming from there will definitely not have a seat mm. because they will not hold election in some of their areas. Mm. And if there's no election in the area, there's no way they can come back to the house. Mm. So somebody is not prepared to pay the price. Okay. That is what it is. Mm. You can only have a good economy where there is security. In an atmosphere of insecurity, nobody is going to go into anywhere. People don't go to worship in those areas anymore. You can't, some of the churches are not opening up anymore. Some of the schools are not opening up anymore. So if you say there should be no state of emergency, when there is emergency in place, people are still dying. So are you now saying that if there is no emergency, people will not die again? There will be more civilian casualties. People will not come out for election in those areas. But is there a possibility that these members of the House who want, uh, who do not want an extension, given the reason that this is what their people want, is there a possibility that this is actually what the people from this video want? They don't want an extension in the emergency room. Uh, the emergency. An ordinary man wants his freedom. An ordinary man wants a situation whereby he can go about doing his businesses mm. because he has to feed his family. Whether you extend emergency or you don't extend emergency, there must be some food on the table. Mm. Mm. How to get this food on the table may be the driving force for these people saying that they don't want emergency rule. Fine. But you have to look at the other side that even when you make the money or when you carry your goods to the market how do you cope with bomb today bomb tomorrow mm. so you are not likely okay to have a finally good we got a caller from yobe good morning ahmed welcome to call digest ahmed are you there yeah my name is ahmed from yobe state Let's go ahead with the I contribution. Speaking, we don't want uh, this emergency rule. We don't want to 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 uh, 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 bring this emergency rule again. Why? Because we are totally suffering. Hmm. Hello, sir. What's the situation like there under the emergency rule? Hello. Ahmed, what is the situation like for people under the emergency rule in Yobe? I'm afraid I lost that. But thank you for your contribution. I think we got what we wanted. <laughs> we don't want emergency rule because the it, suffering there it's, it's is hard. Much. It's a very hard and harsh situation for that. I can so imagine. How do we balance these two realities? Well, they have to meet midway. One, it's not that the people there want election or no election. It's just the reps. As an individual, as a leader in the community, he wants a re-election at okay. all costs. Mm. But for the people... I'm afraid uh, the suffering may still persist for some time okay. because the military must push forward and exterminate these people. Okay. But again, I wonder where these people have been funded. That government all this while okay. have not been able to destroy the link through which they were being funded or who are the people behind it. Because so many names have been dropped okay. that this person is involved, this person is involved, but nobody has been seriously brought to book we have not heard that mr president talk about certain members being on his cabinet but no name no, no name has been nobody mentioned nobody has been brought to book you you heard about the development on aminu oguche's case oh, oh. where the police and the dss are divided on the issue good well i've been speaking with bola on the new thank you very much sir for joining us today on cold digest is a public affairs analyst as well as being the md uh editor-in-chief of financial standard we're going to take a short break now when we come back we'll be talking about women participation in the 2015 general elections do join us again you can now watch call tv news live from anywhere in the world on our website www.calltvnews.com Click on live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Cool TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Cool TV, leave a space, then news. Cool TV News, a 24-hour news station.